Hi friends, welcome to my channel, Guna Pravalika Uppala. How are you all? I am good. So, if this is the first video you are watching in my channel, so first do subscribe my channel, tap the bell icon and on all to get all my video notifications. In this video, I would, I would like to tell basics of machine drawing and principles of drawing. First, what is drawing? So, a pictorial representation of any object or item or a building or whatever it might be. It is a pictorial representation. So, while it comes to engineering drawing, so engineering drawing uh, for representing any components or any diagrams or whatever it might be, they we should follow some rules and regulations. So, uh, initially, engineering drawings are to be prepared on a standard drawing sheets. So, we have different types of drawing sheets as we all know that uh, like A4 sheet, A3, A2, A1 and A0. These are the regular sheets we use to here. So, drawings can be drawn on dependence of the need. So, it represents the correct shape and size of the object which is easy to visualize and easy to construct any object or anything so to provide the correct information of the drawing we need to use different types of lines curves and uh, dimensions notes uh, scale these are the some parameters we need to follow while we make a draw so, while coming to initial point, I have already told you before, drawing sheets. So, what are drawing sheets? I have already told, engineering drawings are to be prepared on the drawing sheets based on their standard sizes. So, these are used in different ways because it saves paper and facilitates convenient, facilitates convenient storage of drawings. So, these are different types and shapes of drawing sheets. So, this is A0 size and this is A1, A2, A3 and A4. So, what is the difference? What is the dimensions? So, basic uh, A0 sizes comes 841 mm by 1189 mm. So, this is the base size of A4 A0 sheet. So making it half and half and half and half and half gives us the last A4 sheet. Next, uh, I will tell you about the title block, which is a very crucial part in the drawing. So it gives the complete information about the drawing in the drawing sheet. So the location of the title block will be on the right bottom corner of the sheet or it might be a A4 or A3, A2, A1 or A0 whatever it be. So it will be at the right bottom corner. So what is a title block? What does it contain? So the title block contains the complete information and detailed information and just gives abstract of the drawing. So it contains the title of the drawing, the sheet number, scale of the drawing which we have drawn and symbol denoting the method of projection, name of the firm or company, whatever it is, and uh, the staff signatures, approvals, every detail will be in the title block. So, this contains the complete information. What are the dimensions of the title block? So, first let me tell you that. So, this will be 170 mm and this will be 65 mm. So this will be 65. Actually it need to be in some space. This need to be 170. So this is the dimensions of the title block next 
let me tell about the lines this is a very crucial part in the drawing which represents the line itself represents a uh, much data about the drawing so there are different types of lines with uh, different types of thicknesses used for graphical representation of the object so the lines are drawn according to the application we want so let me tell you some lines so there will be a line of continuous thickness so it is the line type a so continuous thickness line so it is used for visualize outlines of the drawing visualize the outlines of the drawing next continuous thin it will be a straight line it is line type b it might be a straight line or curved line so it is used to represent imaginary lines of intersection dimension lines projection lines leader board lines hatching lines outlines of revolved section or uh, short center lines so this continuous thin straight or curved line use it to represents these many dimensions what projection lines leader lines dimension lines hatching lines so next so this is line type c it is continuous thin free hand continuous thin free hand so what does this usually represent is limits of partially or interrupted views and sections this used to represent limits of interrupted views or partial views and sections so next so this is line type d this is continuous thin straight with zigzags so what does this line represents it is just a line which will differentiate the drawing so next this is line type e dashed line thin dashed line this is thin dashed line so what does this represent in a drawing so this represents hidden outlines and edges so this line is used to represent hidden outlines next long dash short dash long dash so this is chain thin this is line type g this is used to represent central lines lines of symmetry and the trajectories so next so this is h type line so this is a chain thin which is thick at ends also changes of direction so for what this line will be useful so this line is useful for representing a cutting planes this line is used for representing the cutting planes okay so next line j so what does this mean so this is chain thick so this is j type line 
This represents indications of lines or surfaces which a special requirement applies. So where a special requirement to represent the drawing is needed, there the ch chain thick is used. Next line type is K. So this is dash, double dash, dash, double dash, long dash. So this is chain thin and double dashed. So this line is used for three different purposes. That is outlines of adjacent parts are represented using K type lines and alternative and extreme positions of movable parts are also represented with this and the centroidal axis is also represented using K type lines. So by showing this diagram I will show you all the lines which I have told you before. So this is A1 line that is continuous thick line which is used to represent the outlines of the diagram. And next B1 line which is represented to imaginary lines of intersection and dimensional lines, projection lines, dimensional lines, projection lines and leader lines hatching lines revolve see here outlines of revolved sections in the place and short center lines and similarly continuous thin freehand lines so I will show you that and next continuous thin with zigzag see here this line here and dashed thin lines see here these are the dashed thin lines which you use it to represent hidden outlines and edges and next chain thin G type see here center lines trajectories, line of symmetries, these represent chain thin and cutting plane lines are used for representing the sectional views and next chain thick, see here, this is the chain thick indication of lines or surfaces to which a special requirement applies see this is a holding purpose so it is a special requirement and next chain thin double dashed see here this is chain thin double dashed so this is used for outline of adjacent parts as well as alternative and extreme positions of the movable part this is the movable part so it is the adjacent and final lines and centroidal axis also we use this next i would like to tell you the projections of drawing that is mainly first angle projections and third angle projections so what is first angle projection and third angle projection so as we all know that there are four quadrants so this is the first quadrant and this is the second quadrant this is the third quadrant and here this is the fourth quadrant so i will remember here first second third and fourth so based on the quadrant the views and the projections have been described so first angle projections and third angle projections Actually, we generally prefer first angle projections. So, what is the difference between the first angle projections and the third angle projections? So, I would like to tell you that. So, let me take an object.
so let it be the object so directly I have taken this let this be my object so this is the iso view isometric view of the object so if it is located here in the axis so the observer the observer is here so the eyesight is like this so the projection here drawn here will be the front view so if the direction of view is from the top the drawing will be here projection will be here so this is top view similarly if we see from this side here it will be the left view here this side we will have the right view so i would like to tell you clearly so if this is our page if this is our up front view see just i'm drawing the positions so this is a represents front view so as it is the first angle projection this is the plane this will be the top view as we are watching from the above it will represent the top view so let it be f front view if we watch from this direction the projection will be on this side so this is view from the left and if you watch from this side the projection will be on this side and this will be the view from the right and if you view from the bottom the projection will be on the top and this is bottom view if you view from the back side like this the projection will be located here this is the view from rear that is from back side this is first angle projection so let me be clear with the third angle projection also and here uh, object is object is located so here our object is located if you see from this side our projection will be on this plane so let it be the front view okay so if you view from the top as here there is no plane the projection will be drawn on this plane this will be the top view so the top view will be on up and if you view object from this side the projection will be this side this is the view from left and similarly if you view from this side it will be projected this side so the view will be here if you view from the rear direction the view will be here red and if you view from the bottom the bottom view will be located here and this is third angle projection so this is the difference between first angle projection and third angle projection so in general we all prefer first angle projection so this is first angle projection where the front view will be at the top that is in the middle so the top view will be located in the below and the bottom view will be in the up right side view will be in the left side and left side view will be in the right side and the rear view will be located here why we have drawn right side view in the left because if you see from this side see as it is the front view top view if you see from the right it will project in the opposite plane so the drawing will be situated in the left side of the front view 
So this is the difference between first angle projection and third angle projection. Hope you are clear with this. Okay friends, hope you are clear with the video. If you have any doubts or queries, you can share it with the comment section. I will respond. If you find information in this, do like, share and subscribe my channel. Do share this video with your friends. I uh, will be with more interesting videos coming up. So, hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Enjoy. Bye-bye.